Again, uh, a happy Sabbath to everyone. It's good to see those of you that are here today. As I mentioned, it was a little chilly outside this morning, but it's nice and warm inside, and so we'll open our Bibles and see what God has for us today. Uh, we're very, very blessed to be able to understand. Again, today's study is involving the end time events. Uh, timeline is always important for us to understand. If you're like I am, when see, you see all these events that are taking place, but yet sometimes it's, it's hard to be able to position them where who comes first, you know? Uh, the old adage, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well, you know, I know the chicken came first <laughs> because God created the chicken. Uh, and the egg is just a byproduct but anyway, regardless, uh, people understand it is from the egg that the chicken comes, right? But we have a creator. I don't think he created a lot of eggs. I think he created the animals themselves. So that's my personal opinion. And, uh, but I, uh, as uh, uh, Colin Ray said, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so uh, anyway, God bless you guys again. Uh, but the chronology of events. If you would turn to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs 12, chapter 25. I've heard it said by people that uh, have attended church with me over the years, uh, they don't want to hear anymore. Oh, I've heard enough. Oh, I don't want to know anything else. Uh, I've, I've got all I need to know, so don't tell me anything else. I don't want to understand anything else. I don't want to hear something strange or something new. As we spoke about last week, that would, that would drive them crazy. They would say, oh, no, don't tell me that. <laughs> so, uh, but the, uh, the reality is Proverbs chapter 25, and, and you either have it or you don't. But in chapter 25 in verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Wow. So God is all about concealing things so they can be what? Revealed. But notice, but is the honor of kings is to search out a matter. If you have a desire, everyone in this room does or you wouldn't be here. If you have a desire in your heart to know and understand God, don't pat yourself on the back. Mm -hmm. Drop to your knees and give him praise because he's drawing you He's getting you to come to see him more clearly. Understand that the secrets we are told belong to God, right? And those things that are revealed belong to those who they're revealed to. But we know, and we also heard uh, in a couple studies back in Matthew chapter 13, uh, Yeshua says, to you it is given, but to them it is not given. We understand. But Jesus told the 12 that all, that's pretty, you know, overwhelming, all, totally encompassing, all that the Father has given me, I am giving to you. So I think Yeshua knew what day the Sabbath was, does he not? Yeah. Yeshua knew all of the law and everything about it. And so there he was giving all this information to those chosen 12 so that they might understand. So we also understand that Yeshua says, I've got so much to tell you, but you're not able to what? You're not able to get it just yet. You're not able to bear it or you're not even able to understand it all. So what Yeshua is doing is he's given us the information as we are able to what? To handle it, to understand it, to deal with it. So we need to, to realize that we want to search out a matter. We want to understand. We want to know. What does the prophet Jeremiah tell us? What's the greatest thing in the world? If you glory in anything, let it be what? That, that you know and understand God, Yahweh. Isn't that awesome? If someone says, what are you thankful for? And people go off rattling off all of these physical gifts and you say that I know and understand my creator. That's what you're thankful for. That's the most important thing in your life. 
And brethren, that's pretty awesome. If we can come to a point in our life where we understand that it is God who gives us all understanding. It is God who gives us through his spirit, you know, the, the desire to want to know him. To, to desire to want to look after him. What was David? A man what? After God's own heart. He wanted to know God. He wanted to be with God. He wanted to understand God. Did David sometimes say, Lord, where are you at? Why have you left me alone? But we know that God is with us even when we don't always understand or realize it. And so, brethren, we are living in a world that is evil. It's continually evil, just as it was in the days of Noah. Remember what Yeshua told us, that in the end days, it would be as what? As the days of Noah. As the days of Noah. Sin was running rampant. It's no different today. You've got little girls and little boys that are decided they want to be the opposite sex. Just breaks my heart. You see 11 and 12 year olds, young children, not even reaching puberty yet. And then it is dealing with and messing with what God has created. It's an abomination. But brethren, who is ruling this world? It's Satan the devil. And if you don't understand that, you're not awake. It is Satan's world. It's the deep state that's running the world. Yes, the deep state is Satan and his angels. We know God tells us in Psalm 82, the time is coming where they will be judged because they have, they have done such a lousy job of ruling and judging this earth. And there's a falling away coming in the church. And why? We know that they love not the truth. So he sends them a strong delusion that they believe lies. Is that not true? When you hear people talking, they, they actually are convinced. They believe. They are convicted in their heart that they are right. And we are the stupid ones. We are the, the, the deprived ones. We're just ignorant. But yet, brethren, we know that when you love the truth, we know that God will make sure you understand him. Uh, but believers in Messiah, if there is a great falling away, which there is coming right now, churches being closed by the dozens per day in this country. I just saw another one over 155 got closed just uh, here a month or so ago. And because there's not enough people. And if we were not truth seekers, you know, our little congregation could be closed. But we're going to come. If there's two people coming, if there's two or more, where's Christ? He's with you. So, you know what? We'll never close. Because Christ is with us. And for those who he calls, for those who come, will hear the truth of God. That's really what we are all about. We want to know. But we see the many people today uh, giving up on, uh, on morals. Church people saying, well, I mean, if that's what they really want to do, they're showing love to each other. Brethren, if we're not careful, we can fall into the trap of accepting sin. Every one of us can. Now, you can love the sinner, but never love the sin. It just blows my mind. I don't, we'll never get into politics from this podium here. But yet there's a party that endorses abortion. It's what they, their main thrust is, is they have the right to abort children. And yet we have many churches around this world, around this country rather, that will vote for that party. How sad. 
because it's obvious they don't know the Lord. But they're playing religion. They're practicing religion. And they think somehow that people ought to have a right to where they want to kill others. Even old folks now, you get to a point, oh, he's useless. Let's, uh, let's let him go on. Put him down. Yeah, put him down like you would a sick dog or a sick cow. It's pretty sad. But rather we know those who love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Now, most people accept a seven-year time period of great trouble that lies ahead. And they call it the tribulation. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is this time period that lies ahead. The first half of the tribulation, it seems to be split in two sections of three and a half years. Based on the book of Revelation, we see that referred to many, many times as three and a half years. And so it seems to be split that way. My personal opinion is the first three and a half years could start at any time. Now, it may not start till 2025, 2026, 27. But I do believe that our Messiah will be here before 2032. And I do believe this, this whole 2030 agenda that, that they've got, they're talking about, is, is kind of outrageous. It blows your mind of what they are thinking things will be like. But we know that times will get more and more difficult for believers. That's us. Therefore, we're told you must what? To be saved. Endure. Endure? If everything is okay, why do you have to endure? Because it's obvious this is Satan's world. And guess what? He hates you. He wants your throne. He wants your crown, rather. He wants to destroy you any way he possibly can. We do know that times will get more and more difficult, as I mentioned, for believers. And the Middle East will continue to worsen with tension and threat of war. It's not going to get better over there. It's going to get worse. We know there will be two witnesses, according to our Bible, that's going to come up and stand in the land of Israel. And they're going to be warning the people. I believe that could happen really at any time. It may not happen for a few more years. That's my best guess. But it could happen sooner than we think. But so just keep our eyes and ears, you know, open to what's going on. So we do know the two witnesses will preach and they'll teach for three and a half years. And the Jews will be taught the truth by these two witnesses. Who they are, I don't know. We've talked about it before that it possibly could be Enoch and Elijah because they did not see death the way we see in the Bible. And it's appointed to all men, what? Once to die. So it's not like they died and come back to life and they're going to die again because that'd be second to two deaths, right? So we know either it's someone that's alive today or it's someone that God has put on ice. And you, you know, we think about what do you mean put on ice? Well, God can kind of just freeze you in motion. I do that with our genetics in the cattle industry. We'll put them on ice. I've had calves born that were actually an embryo in a tank for 30 years. So just because you've got it in liquid nitrogen and it's frozen, so God, had, God created nitrogen, right? So I think if he had Enoch and Elijah and he's got them on ice, so to speak, and he wants to bring them back, but it may not be them. So don't be locked in that it has to be them. But I think the people in the land of Israel would listen to them when they open up their Bibles and, and they start talking about Jezebel. And they start talking about the, the, what they know of in their Bible. And the story and the life they lived. I think they'd have their ready-made attention. And guess what? They're wearing. They're wearing sackcloth. That was, their, that was their garb of the day. 
these ministers today in three-piece suits, they're going to be feeling a little strange to put a sackcloth on them. If indeed there are, those are the, are the witnesses that they're going to be preaching. But we don't know. But we do know that many will accept the message. And in the second three and a half year time period, they will call upon the name of Yeshua. See, the Jews have rejected Jesus all this time. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, he said, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh, in the name of the Lord. And so we know when Yeshua comes and they cry out because of the trouble, the turmoil that's going to be in their land, the turmoil that's going to be there killing them. And they're going to cry out for Messiah. And Jesus shows up. But when he comes, he comes as king of kings. And he's coming to fight. And so we know that's at the end of this second three and a half years. So I think it's important that we understand that indeed the Jews are going to be saved. They're going to hear the message. They're going to understand. And so the two witnesses preached for three and a half years. And then we know later the everlasting gospel comes out from the angel. Anyone that's not heard it all over the globe, it says every eye, every ear, every nation, every kindred, every tongue is going to see the everlasting gospel from this angel. So there's not going to be any what? Excuse, right? All are going to be able to have heard. People say, well, what if you never hear? You will hear. That time will come if you're alive on the globe. But we know that's yet future. But during the turmoil of Satan flexing his muscles, we know that God is going to seal the first fruit, the firstborn, the priesthood. Now, brethren, I believe this small congregation will be in that group. God will seal you. It says, you know, we know that uh, Satan is going to be angry and he's not going to be able to touch them. Uh, and so Satan causes his angels, those who have been chained in darkness, you know, the angels of Second Peter and Jude, those that that actually cohabited with women in Genesis chapter six. Uh, they sin. And so Satan is gonna cause them to be loosed. Revelation chapter nine. And they're gonna go after men that are not sealed with God's seal in their foreheads. So we'll, we'll see that as we continue on as well. And so we know that these uh, angels are going to be loosed out of the prison for a time period. And I don't fully understand it other than God is just just and he turns about uh, like like kind or like behavior uh, to give them an opportunity to repay God's chosen people. Let's let's look at it a little bit. Go to Revelation chapter nine. This is an interesting story. Uh, I don't have all the answers for it. I've got more questions than anything. But we see in Revelation chapter 9 and in verse 1, the fifth angel sounds and a star from heaven fell to the earth and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, I don't know, but the bottomless pit don't sound too inviting to me. Uh, the, uh, we do know those in the bottomless pit are those angels who left their habitation. They've been in chains of darkness. Jesus visited them in, uh, uh, at, uh, at the resurrection. Peter makes that clear. Jude makes it clear. They left their habitation. Uh, Genesis tells us they cohabited with women. And the, the children from that made God so angry that he, des he destroyed the earth. So there's a lot going on there. And so if you'll see in verse 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither anything, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Wow. 
Now, if Satan's angels are loosed out of the prison, do you think he's going to go hurt those people who love evil, who follow wickedness, who are on Satan's side? No, that's his people. It's obvious, no. He's going after God's people. And he can't get the first fruit. See, the firstborn are sealed with right here in the forehead. So who does he go after? It's obvious to me he goes after the church. He goes after Christians. He goes after those who, who love God and, and love Jesus. Now notice if you would. And uh, he says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. So they will not be able to kill the Christians, but they should be tormented for five months. That's 150 days. They're going to be tormented. And their torment is the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. I've never been bit by a scorpion, but I don't fully understand what he's telling us here. But there's obviously a great deal of pain. But notice verse 6. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it. You know, when you are suffering to the point and you're hurting really, really bad, Sometimes you can cry out, oh God, just let me die. I can't deal with this pain anymore. Now, lest we think these scorpions are bugs, drop down to verse 7. And the shapes of these locusts were likened to horses prepared into battle. I don't fully understand that. On their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. And their faces, I do understand this. Their faces were as the faces of men. So the angels, they will be portrayed as men. Faces of men. So we realize that angels can present themselves as human beings, right? We have one wrestle with Jacob. Abraham ate dinner with a couple of them. And I truly believe in the time of the flood, when the angels came down and cohabited with women, they presented themselves as men. No doubt very handsome men. Very powerful, persuasive men. And so there we see. Now let's, let's so you know, understand about this five months. Go back to Genesis. Let's just see what God is doing. Genesis chapter 7, I believe it is. So at the time the flood waters started rising, and it says the rainwaters are up on, on the earth for 150 days or five months. And so as the waters began to rise, and they go to where one hill was covered with water, and then the next little mountain was covered with water and no doubt the Nephilim who were going to drown were going to the highest point they could find. And finally, when all the land was covered, they drowned. Now we know they were half angel and half man. And so the man part died. You know, flesh and blood died. But the spirit part cannot die. So that spirit part became the demons that are looking for homes, looking for habitats to live in. Notice if you would chapter 8, drop down to verse 3 just to confirm it. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. So when we go back over here to Revelation 9 and we see that these same angels that would have seen their children in the Nephilim drowning for 150 days. It's like God is saying, okay, I did this to your children. You've got 150 days to exact judgment or to, to hurt my children. I don't understand it, folks, but that's what it appears to be to me. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what it is. 
But it sure appears that, again, they were given five months, which is the exact time period. Of course, God put one caveat in there, and that is you cannot kill them. You cannot kill them. Yes. I'm sorry. Eight three uh, uh, Genesis, and then I'm back. I'm back in Revelation now, chapter nine. Okay, but we know that death, it says, will be welcome. So you're hurting pretty bad if you actually welcome death, brethren. But at the end of this first three and a half years, Satan will increase the violence toward those who belong to God. Uh, we know that he has seen the two witnesses be killed. And guess what? After three and a half days, what happened? They rose. they rose up. And they're resurrected. And then on the seventh trump, in Revelation 11 and verse 15, we know there's a change in power. Now this is the day we're looking for, folks. Revelation 11, 15. Because that's the day thy kingdom comes. It says, when the kingdoms of this world will no longer rule be ruled by satan but the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our god of our lord and his christ or his anointed son but there's a change in power coming go to psalm 110 psalm chapter 110 this is the verse that we often quote but i want to make sure we understand one point that i think he's making clear psalm chapter 110 Here we have two lords. Adonai and Adoni, two different Hebrew words. But the Lord, which is Yahweh, said unto my Lord, which we know is Yeshua. Yeshua is our master, right? He's our Lord. He's our master. You know, he's the Messiah. So David here is, is, uh, is talking and he says, the Lord, Yahweh, said unto my Lord, sit you at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now, bear with me for a minute because I want you to make sure you get something here. So we know that Yahweh in heaven and Yeshua is sitting at his right hand. So he's saying, son, sit you at my right hand until I make all of these enemies your footstool till I get them at your feet. So we need to fully realize that's, that's what he's saying. Now we know that the earth, well, let's go to Isaiah 66 and we'll see it both ways. Isaiah chapter 66. The heaven, verse one, Isaiah 66 and verse one. And it says, thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So remember what David is, is, is quoting there in Psalm 110. And he says, the Lord Yahweh said to my Lord, Yeshua, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So we know the difference in heaven and earth, right? Yeshua is in heaven, but he said, sit down and wait until I make your enemies on the earth, till I make them down to earth, till I bring them to be your footstool. Now, footstool is the earth. There it is right there. Verse one, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So the footstool is where your feet is and that's where your enemies are cast down to. Now, it's pretty interesting. We see what happens here. So the enemies will be kicked down to this earth. Now, you already probably ahead of me. You know what happens in Revelation chapter 12. We know there's someone going to be kicked down to this earth. And so we know at that point in time, when that seventh trump sounds and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, there's a change of power. There's a new world order, folks. 
is going to be a change. The resurrection has taken place. The 1 Thessalonians 4 passage, the 1 Corinthians 15 passage, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Wow! That quick. And the firstborn, the first fruit of God has been resurrected to heaven. And Jesus says, I've got you. In a moment, we know that will take place. Now, we sometimes think that everyone's going to be resurrected at the same time. But let's make sure we got it. We know that the prophet Daniel told us that people would be resurrected in their, in their own order, in their own lot. And in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, let's go there to make sure you got it. 1 Corinthians 15, we sometimes read this and read it all as if it's one resurrection, but it's not. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 23. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 23. But it says every man will, will, will be resurrected in his own order, right? So we got every man will be resurrected or in his own order, be made alive in his own order. Christ, now he's going to give you the order right here. If we, We'll get it. Christ, now we know he was resurrected, right? He was the first begotten, first son of God, resurrected. The first fruits, they are resurrected at the rapture, at the 1 Corinthians 15 passage, at the Revelation 11, 15 passage, when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. It's what we're looking forward to. And then, afterward, do we see that, folks? Afterward, they that are Christ at His coming. And we know those are indeed the church at his coming. It's the second coming. When Christ comes and gets the first fruits, that's not the second coming of Christ. We all know that, right? When he comes and gets the brothers, he comes and gets the firstborn, and they're going to rule with him. But then we know there's another event. There's those who belong to Christ. And we know that indeed belongs to is a church. He calls them other sheep. And so we know that understanding of all these things, though, is, is given to us. If you understand it, go to Luke chapter 24. Now, these were disciples, Luke 24. These were disciples that lived with Jesus for three and a half years. Now, you think, oh, they surely know everything. Do you think they knew everything? You think they understood everything? Jesus said, I've got so much to tell you, and yet you're not able to bear it at the present time. Look, if you would, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 24. 44. Luke 24 and verse 44. And uh, he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He's saying these prophecies in the Old Testament, they're all about me. And they have to be fulfilled. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Wow. Isn't that something? They were with him for three and a half years. They may not have fully understood the prophecies. Yes, lady. Yes. It's, it's my sister over here just saying their eyes were opened. And now they can see. I was blind, but now I see. So God is so good to give us understanding if we will seek him. Remember to a king, searching out a matter. Why does he say a king? Because what are the first fruit going to be, folks? Kings and priests. They're going to reign with Christ a thousand years. For eternity, they will be firstborn sons of God. They receive a double portion of God. That doesn't mean now our secondborn brothers and thirdborn brothers and sisters will not be in the family. We'll love them all the same. It's just a different responsibility. We understand that. 
Jesus resurrects the firstborn brothers and sisters, and they're taken to heaven at that seventh trump. Now we know Michael does something. When they go to heaven, there's a change of power. Go to Revelation chapter 12 and let's see it. Revelation chapter 12. There's a change in power. And so we know that there's going to be some changes made. 